Welcome to my channel, I'm Bowden the Great, and oh baby, it feels good to be back. I've been excitedly waiting for this update, and I'm sure you have as well, but now the wait is finally over. The Uncharted Water update completely changed the landscape of Lens Island. Obviously the mechanics are similar, but everything else is totally revamped. I've had a good amount of time already at this point to play a lot of the new update, and I wanted to share with you the things you should explore first when you first fire up that new save. And whether you're brand new to Lens Island or you're back from a long break, you're going to absolutely be obsessed with the new update. Before we get to everything though, please do not forget to like and subscribe because I'll be doing a lot, and I mean a lot, of Lens Island content. The first thing you'll notice when you start a new game is that there's a little tutorial for you to do which basically helps newer players at least get some goal in mind for starting out. Regardless, to kick things off, I highly recommend gathering some resources and slowly trying to complete the tutorial. Now, there's no need to rush it though, as completing the tutorial doesn't unlock any new quest steps. Now, you may not know this about me, but I am a hardcore fan of any sort of base building games, so I really enjoy crafting my own home, so I recommend doing that as soon as possible. It's technically part of the tutorial, so it might seem obvious, but I'd like to take a little bit more time with building my first home. It will take a decent amount of resources though, which can be gathered from around the island. Wood is obviously gathered from trees, stone is gathered from stone nodes, and clay can be found around the island, particularly near bodies of water. Now with that said though, do not feel obligated to make your first home this lavish mansion because there are so many cool islands around the map that you can find and build beautiful homes at. I personally like to keep it a little bit more simple with maybe a couple furniture items and most importantly a bed so you can pass the time when it gets dark out. And once you've gotten settled with your new home, let's do some exploring. You've probably by now figured out how to open the map, if not, you just press M on your keyboard. The map is going to help you explore around the world without getting too lost. Now in the dead center of the first island is going to be Bridgewater. Now if you notice, it's a little bit run down, but with our help we can restore her back to her former glory. But I'll get to that later. There's a lot more unique locations around the island, so once you've had a pint of the Bridgewater Inn, I recommend exploring outside the town walls. You'll find things from different fruits and vegetables to ancient keystones scattered around the island. And I wonder what they open. And hopefully you've brought your pickaxe with you. If not, you can always grab it from the chest from where you started. There's a small cave carved into the face of the cliff in the dark forest where you can actually gather some important resources such as iron shards and coal. Be careful though, because you're not alone. Once you've gotten the iron shards, it's about time to get your farming on. Farming is a bit different and nerfed from the last update, so don't expect this massive farmer. You can basically become rich very quickly. I recommend crafting a couple farming plots and plant whatever seeds you have in your inventory. Now when harvesting wild crops, there's about a 10% chance for them to drop seeds, so you'll want to be sure to harvest any wild plants you see. Don't worry though, because when your crops are ready to harvest, you do get those seeds back so you can continue farming. Now I mentioned those iron shards, but you'll want to craft a watering can because relying on rain to water our farm is really not a great idea. But that said, that's one of my favorite new features is that raining in-game actually waters your crops. Now for you new players, you can either fill your watering can up by building a well or just by walking into water with your watering can equipped. And when you're near your farm plots, just press W with your watering can in hand and water your farms. And hopefully in no time you'll have a bountiful yield of crops. Since now you've got your crops rolling in, let's help old mayor with fixing up the town. Don't go thinking that it's purely cosmetic because there's a lot of pros to repairing the town. I won't spoil all the fun for you though, but with your first unlock you can actually unlock the ability to craft villagers a home. Now you don't have to build something super lavish for them, just make sure that they've got a roof over their heads and a bed for them to sleep in and they'll be A-OK. -okay. Just be sure not to forget to move them in officially, which I've forgotten to do more than once. Once they get moved in, you unlock their shops in Bridgewater, which can be used to either buy and sell goods or to even unlock decorations for your home, which is a must for you home builder types out there. Now with all the resource gathering and exploring, you've probably by now at least unlocked a couple of skill points to be used. Now if you've played Lens Island before, this is a brand new feature that I absolutely love. And ironically as well, Flow Studio decided to add this skill tree in the game pretty much last minute, which is hilarious considering it's one of my favorite things about the new update. The skill tree is rather extensive and quite frankly pretty overwhelming at first because it's hard to decide what you want to unlock first. And I'll do a separate video on my take on different builds that would be most beneficial to players depending on your playstyle. For now I'll just say find a skill that you want the most and slowly unlock towards that. And don't feel like you have to spend every skill point you get immediately. You can always let them accumulate if you're not sure and spend them whenever you're ready, especially since some skills require multiple skill points to unlock them. 
Now you've hopefully got a couple pieces of iron shards left over after crafting the watering can, so I recommend putting those to upgrade your starter weapon to the iron sword. It'll make you more formidable in the caves against the void creatures, which we definitely want that extra little edge. Now my next task is probably going to be a real challenge for you, but with your sword in hand and hopefully a hot bar full of food, try to clear the ancient cave. Now if you've tried and tried again and you just can't get it, it's not the end of the world considering you can always come back whenever you're more geared up. You do get a nice little reward for clearing the cave for your first time. Now with the ancient caves completed or not, you're probably ready to take a little break from combat. Now I like to craft a fishing rod next because it's really relaxing just to do a little fishing, whether that be in the pond, river, ocean, or even in the caves. And considering we just put some hard work getting through the ancient caves, we earned ourselves a little rest and relaxation on the shores with our trusty fishing rod. And an added bonus, you can actually cook the fish you catch and eat as food for when you're sailing the seven seas. Now speaking of sailing the seven seas, before we set off on our grand expedition, we'll need a sea vessel, which our first boat is unlocked at the workbench level 2. Now it's not the most luxurious option that we've got at the moment, but we can always upgrade it later once our Lynn learns a little bit more about sailing the seas. Be sure to toss your newly learned raft somewhere in the sea, and you're set to sail off into the horizon in search of new land. Anyways, that is the first 10 things that I like to do at the start of a new playthrough. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and at least this maybe gets a few of you started beyond the tutorial on what you can do, because in reality, you can play it however you want, which is what makes Lens Island so great. If you have any questions or comments, I love reading them, so please drop them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear the things you love doing first in Lens Island, and I'll see you next time, YouTube. Peace out.